Hello, welcome to the Sports Philanthropy Podcast. I am your host, Roy Kessel, and today we are very excited to have with us a special guest. We have Ross Brodsky. Ross is a co-founder of Soul Purpose. Ross, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, it was a great opportunity. Uh, Ross is doing some amazing work collecting shoes and distributing those uh, based in the New York area. Ross and his co-founder have really put together quite an organization. So, Ross, before we jump into all the great work that Soul Purpose is doing, I want you to take us back to your own life and tell us what got you interested in sports when you were younger. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I'm a 17-year-old I'm a senior now, and um, I go to Dwight. And, you know, for most of my life, you know, probably since I was three years old, I've been playing, you know, all the main sports, you know, basketball, baseball. Uh, football, soccer, um, you know, in each school, I was always in all those clubs and, and teams like that, um, you know, AAU, all, all uh, anywhere sports was, you know, I, I was there too. Um, and, and I just, you know, I, I've always, you know, played sports and I've always kind of given back. And I thought, you know, why not, you know, try and connect those two things, you know. Well, it's great to be, to be able to give back. So what, what's your favorite sport when you were playing sports? I got to say basketball. I think, you know, it, it's between basketball and baseball. Um, but I think basketball, you know, you can play anywhere. You can play with anybody. Um, you know, you can go to the pickup game at the park and have a good time, you know. Um, basketball is, you know, super fast, super fast paced. And, I, you know, I could watch it all day. Well, it's, it's a great sport. As you said, you don't need a lot of equipment. You just need a, a ball and find somewhere that's got a hoop and you can be out there and play with a, a lot of different levels. We've seen pickup games with uh, everything from NBA players to just uh, the regular average Joes off the street, right? So it's it's an interesting game. Um, one of the things that, that equalizes out, right, based on size or shooting ability and, and everything that goes with it. So Tell us a little bit about the genesis of how you came up with the idea for Soul Purpose. Yeah, so I was motivated to start Soul Purpose uh, last year around February uh, 2020. And I saw a video of a jogger who stopped running and he gave a, a person experiencing homelessness his own sneakers and socks. Um, so the jogger then ran home barefoot. And, you know, I, I thought about that a lot. And you know, we live in a very sneaker conscious uh, society, you know, with, with young adults uh, my age whose feet are growing very quickly. And, you know, that translate into a closet full of, you know, those gently used sneakers. Um, you know, I, I thought about this problem with, you know, the closet full of sneakers. And I spoke to some of my friends and, you know, my co-founder had the same exact problem. And, you know, we thought, why not try and do something with them and try and do some good at the same time? Um, and Soul Purpose turned into a, a fully student-led 501c3 uh, charitable organization that's dedicated to helping those affected by, by homelessness. So when, when you started uh, connecting them, you said you saw a video of a jogger handing uh, shoes to someone. Where, where did you see that? I saw this video on YouTube. I was really just, you know, scrolling through my recommended and, um, you know, I'm, I'm a huge sneaker head. I'm, a, I, you know, I love the newest, newest sneakers. I'm looking at all those drops. Um, you know, I've waited in line sometimes even. Um, so I'm really into that. And, um, it was really kind of just, you know, a news clip sort of, and it was just this jogger and he ran past them and, um, you know, the, per the person experiencing homelessness had no shoes or socks. And um, it was really just cool to see. And it was cool, uh, you know, it was cool to stop and think about. As you said, it's it's impressive to see somebody do that because most people would be like, oh, I'd like to help you, but yeah, this is my only pair of shoes I'm wearing. Um, so it was great to see somebody take that and recognize that, okay, you know what, I can just get home. So it's a little bit of a hardship for me for, a few blocks on the way home, but I've got another pair of sneakers uh, at home. So when when you started, what was the first step that you took? So, you know, 
our, our main thing is that, you know, we collect new and gently used sneakers and socks. And, um, you know, we started in the midst of COVID and, you know, not a lot of shelters wanted to take our stuff. So, you know, we clean them thoroughly. Um, we sanitize them, we refurbish them, and then we donate to these homeless shelters. Um, and we collect these, you know, new and gently used sneakers and socks through sneaker drives, um, mobile sneaker drives, sneaker box uh, donation locations, uh, and purchasing uh, on our on our website a purpose pack. And when I say purpose pack, I mean that's our that's our final product. That's the thing we give out, and it's like a little gift bag. And we give it to an individual, and that includes a pair of sneakers and two pairs of socks. So when you put these gift packs together, right, you've got a lot of moving parts here because you've got the collection of the equipment or of the shoes in the first place, right? And and then you're talking about cleaning and refurbishing. So that that's a big undertaking. Take us through that process of what the, the cleaning and refurbishing looks like. Yeah, so um, just like as an overall today, uh, we have, you know, delivered and, and done this pro process with uh, um, more than 3,000 pairs of sneakers and almost 10,000 pairs of socks. And, you know, we, we service 16 different homeless shelters. And, you know, we have now around 25 different team members from various high schools and colleges. So, you know, obviously kids around my age, you know, a year older or even younger, you know, we got school Monday through Friday. We don't have a lot, a lot of time. But, you know, towards the end of the week, um, you know, Thursday, Friday or Saturday, our team members will come um, to my house and we'll clean, um, you know, we'll clean a ton of sneakers and um, we'll get in. Uh, we actually, Soul Purpose has, you know, taken over our patio and our third bedroom, actually. So the third bedroom is, um, is our headquarters, we call it. Um, those are where the dry sneakers go. And that's where we do um, the, all the lacing and soling and making of the purpose packs. So our team members will come and they'll help, you know, in the headquarters room and do some lacing and soling and making of the purpose packs and get all, get all that going um, and get them ready to be delivered. Or, you know, they'll help come um, on the patio. And then, um, you know, whether it's Thursday or Friday or Saturday, um, Saturdays are usually our, our best day to deliver. So, you know, I'll take, you know, either two to three team members on a, on a regular delivery day where we'll go to like, you know, two or three different shelters and they'll come help and deliver. Or, you know, we'll have some big events, big delivery events where we'll take a U-Haul truck and we'll deliver, you know, around 500, 600 purpose packs. And I'll have, you know, six or seven guys come and help and it'll be, you know, good, cool thing, you know, fun, a lot of camaraderie, things like that. So tell us a little bit about what's in the purpose pack. I know you said it's a pair of shoes, a couple of pairs of socks, but what is the actual pack? So, uh, so we have, you know, we have the, the pair of sneakers and, and two pairs of socks. We'll have, um, you know, Bombas was helping us out a lot. Um, we, we were their uh, donation part giving partner and they supplied us with, you know, I think around 750 socks so far for men, women, and, and children. Um, and the sneakers will be, you know, we, we, we really go and try and promote uh, sneakers, you know, but we'll take all, all types of shoes. Um, but sneakers are the easiest, easiest to clean. Um, so we, you know, whether it's men, women, or children, it'll be, you know, a sneaker type shoe, which is, you know, um, in that, in that paper, paper gift bag with um, with our logo stamped on it. Well, it's interesting you say sneakers are the easiest to clean because as an athlete, I think they would be the hardest to clean because it seems like when you have dress shoes, you can get them polished up, you can get them cleaned and shined and uh, and ready to go. But when you're when you're playing sports and sweating through your shoes and everything else, it seems like that's harder. Yeah, we uh, I you know, we took a long, long time to figure out what we could use to get the smell out, get the dirt out, get, you know, those salty sweat stains out, all that, all that nasty stuff out. But we have this potion that we use and we scrub them and we throw them in the wash with a crazy sanitizing solution. They come out, I mean, like, like brand new, you know, I, we have a saying around here, 
you know, we don't, we don't give away anything that, you know, we wouldn't wear ourselves. So we try and make sure, you know, something, the product is, 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 you know, almost perfect as it can be. And, you know, if the laces are, are um, like the tips are a little destroyed or the soles are, you know, too dirty, there's some, you know, nasty footprint on there, we'll replace them with new ones. So we try and make it the best product we can, we can make. So the laces, I understand that's pretty easy to just throw in a new set of laces, but how do you, how do you fix up the soles? So we buy, um, we buy these soles that are uh, able to be cut. So we have like a, a chart kind of like the biggest possible size. It'll, it'll go up to like 14 and we'll just kind of line them two up and cut, you know, cut out the sole for the sneaker. Got So that's a, a big undertaking to get everything there. You're going to need to tell your, uh, your dad, you guys need to get uh, a bigger place to house all of the, uh, all the shoes that you want to get. We, uh, we hope, yeah, we hope for that in the future for sure. For sure. So now you're, you're working on this. I know you're graduating high school coming up here pretty quickly. Um, tell us what your plans are for the summer. Yeah, for the summer, I mean, you know, I don't have any huge plans, but I know, you know, the warm weather is coming. Um, we like to do these outside events. We call them take to the streets events. Uh, we've done two so far before the cold weather came, unfortunately. But in the summer, uh, we hope to do these outside events where we set up you know, a table or a few tables, and we give out um, our purpose packs in person to those experiencing homelessness on, on the street. So for example, um, one of our take to streets events was downtown by Tompkins Square Park around like Avenue A. And, you know, some of my team members came and they, they helped out also. It was a great experience. And we gave out around 150. That was our first one. Um, the second one we gave around uh, 200 and the third one we gave around 500 purpose packs I want to say and you know we contacted the local churches um, soup kitchens shelters you know to have all their clients come and um, that same day we actually donated water and lunches so that was also given out on that same day too um, but since we're you know under age we don't we're not allowed to go um, you know, inside and, and interact with, you know, those people in the shelters or those experiencing homelessness. Um, we kind of just drop off our purpose packs to, you know, the higher ups or the managers. And this, you know, this, the, these take it to the streets events, these outside events, um, you know, give us that, that cool in-person experience, you know, that we wouldn't get normally. And, um, you know, it, it, it sounded a little weird to me at first, but I mean, when you see like the reactions that, you know, these guys are having the smiles on their faces. It, it's crazy. You know, we make, we like to make a big thing out of everything. We make all these videos. It's just, it's a really good time. So as, as you do that, uh, you said you're not allowed in. Is that an issue of being 18 years old and you'll be able to get in there soon? It's, I want to say it's either 18 or 21, but we, we give away, you know, however many purpose packs it is. And we, you know, we drop them off with, with those who need to, you know, divide them out to, to the clients. But yeah, it's, it's definitely like an age problem. Well, hopefully you're going to get past that pretty quickly. I think with the type of work that you're doing, um, there, there's some great opportunities and uh, would love to share what you're doing as we're going to through the podcast with our network, because I know we've got a lot of contacts that I think could help support the work that you're doing. And uh, see what we can put in place to help get you more of those things, more, more socks, more shoes, more water, other things that can go into those, those purpose packs. So when you started, I think one of the things that I really liked is you guys really started completely from scratch with people that have never run an organization or a nonprofit. And yet you figured this out really quickly as to how you can make a difference here. And I'm looking at, at your media kit and you, you've got these really great boxes for, for the donation. So tell us where, where those came from. Yeah. So, you know, obviously I'm, I'm 17 and I've never, you know, done a nonprofit before, but um, I did get, you know, some help from my parents. My parents have, you know, working in the business world for, you know, a lot of their lives. 
Um, you know, we started off doing business plans and we also, um, my school, Dwight school has a program called spark tank. You know, it's a spinoff of shark tank and we presented to them and we got a lot of good advice, uh, from them. And, you know, they helped us out a little bit and they also helped us get off the ground with a $3,000 grant. So, you know, that helped a lot. And, um, we were able to get a lot of good stuff from, from, from that $3,000. Um, but we knew we had to, you know, uh, ex extend our range of, you know, collecting sneakers and socks. And, um, you know, we, we searched for, you know, kind of donation box places where we could put our, you know, have a little advertisement for us, but also have a good, good product where someone could drop their sneakers off and also check out, you know, what we're doing and, and what they're, you know, really donating to and, and for. And, um, you know, we, we called up um, the people at the box company and, you know, we went through at least six different designs and um, we finally got a good one that worked. Well, that's great. So uh, I know one of the challenges with printing things for boxes is you usually need enormous quantities before they want to, to go and run something through their, their system. So when you started with them, what, what kind of quantity did you guys produce? Uh, well, we started off, um, we order however uh, many, actually they allowed us to do however many we wanted. Um, I want to say uh, my dad had a little relationship with uh, with the person who worked at the at the box company beforehand. So that might have helped a little bit. But um, never hurts to have good relationships. Of course, of course, it, uh, it, def it definitely helped a little bit. But um, the lady really liked what we did and, and was really inspired and, and she just kind of wanted to help however she could. So, um, you know, we, we, we'd call her up um, and say, you know, to start, we had um, Harry's Shoes, which was one of our donation box locations. And we needed, they had two stores, one, one uh, Harry's Shoes and Harry's Shoes for Kids. So we called up and we said, you know, we need to, uh, we got to have two donation boxes and they were delivered in a week and we went to go set them up. So it was good. And uh, they, they look like they're they're pretty durable. Have those been uh, lasting pretty well? Yeah, I, I think um, we have been ordering more, um, but they are they're pretty durable. They are cardboard, and they have um, they have tops to them, so you can close them up, and um, you can also use the top as a backboard. Um, but yeah, they're they're pretty good. They're pretty durable. Um, they're pretty big too. So, you know, we wouldn't have to come get the sneakers every day. Now, when you've placed them, tell us about some of the places that you've been able to place the boxes. So just to name a few, like I said before, Harry's and Harry's Shoes for Kids. Um, they're both, you know, uh, shoe stores with high traffic um, in the area. Um, that's here in, in uh, Upper West Side, Manhattan. Um, we have one. Um, at CEA gym in Long Island. Um, so, you know, all those, all those people around Long Island um, can go in there and drop their sneakers off. And actually uh, pretty recent, um, we have been speaking to Raymore and Flanagan and um, we're going to be a Raymore and Flanagan partner and they're going to allow us to, well, they are allowing us to put boxes to start in 26 of their stores. So we're hoping to, uh, get that rolled out and um, get a lot of sneakers. Well, this is going to become a full-time job for you. You're going to, you're going to have to put that uh, college uh, process on the side to, to run the show here, but you start talking about 26 venues, you're going to collect shoes. Let's have a conversation then about how you uh, actually do collect and store and, and are going to be able to clean in, in that type of scale because uh, you're, you're going to outgrow that third bedroom pretty quickly. Yeah, well, we're hoping to uh, get a space real soon. We actually, we recently got um, a grant from the Minnie and Burke Foundation for $7,000. So we hope to, you know, think about what we can do and, and find a space where we can get, you know, all of our team members from all you know, different high schools and colleges, or whoever really just wants to volunteer for that time to come help and you know clean in that area, um, you know, collecting wise, you know, have you know, in the future a truck that we can go around and just kind of 
you know, grab them in garbage bags and throw them in, um, you know, and, and if anyone, you know, we can find out and if anyone wanted to donate, you know, some space, they could contact us too. Um, we, we'd love to have that. Um, but yeah, definitely collecting them in, in garbage bags and throwing them in a truck and going around um, would be the, would be the process. Yeah, it's, I think people, uh, people look at something like what you're doing, right? And the concept is relatively simple. And then they don't understand how many steps are, are behind that in terms of what, what else has to happen to, to really make it work. And so uh, you've done a great job figuring it out. And I, I know that as you grow, you're going to continue to scale this and, and get it. Do you uh, have plans for how quickly you want to grow, how far you want to grow? Uh, well, one of our goals were to, was to getting it um, out of the house before before school ends. That, that was definitely one of our goals and make it more as a, a managing perspective than, you know, being always hands-on um, and, you know, hoping to have, um, you know, someone who can drive a truck around and collect, you know, these 26 stores. Um, they, they want us to go to all 136, you know, that that's crazy right now, you know, we hope to, you know, have, have maybe a driver with a truck to go around and do that type, of, that type of thing. Um, you know, maybe someone to, to clean, um, but we, we definitely hope to get it out of the house and hopefully use the patio for, for something other than the sneaker factory. Well, you'll have to turn the patio into your uh, your marketing studio to put up together all the things that you uh, that you want to have. But it's uh, you know it's it's incredible the work that you're you're doing. Tell us a little bit about you know your your co-founder and then some of the other people that are helping you succeed in what you're doing. Yeah, so me and my my co-founder Alex um, Goldenberg, we we went to the same high school since you know ninth grade. I've known him all throughout high school. Um, you know, we had most of the same classes from ninth and 10th and some 11th and some 12th. Um, but we've been, you know, working on this together since, since February of 2020. And when we launched, um, you know, we presented together with Spark Tank. Um, you know, he always come, comes here and just does some cleaning and, you know, helps out in the room. Um, you know, um, he doesn't live here, so he's not, you know, 24 seven, but he's always um, helping out with decisions and all, you know, all the important things. Um, you know, he helps out with the volunteers and, and, um, you know, basically does, you know, me and him do similar, similar uh, responsibilities. So you, you've been doing this for a little over a year now. So as you look back to when you started, tell us what you think has been the hardest part for you. The hardest part, um, you know, other other than working in the middle of a pandemic, um, and um, you know, kind of staying on track with a little bit of of the of the sports perspective. You know, we're having some difficulties, um, you know, connecting with these you know professional sports teams and and these athletes. Um, you know, we we all are reaching out and we have reached out. To all the New York teams and, and New York athletes, and and we would love to have you know a professional sports athlete to be a be a spokesperson for for sole purpose. And you know all, all these teams and and all these players do a ton of good community outreach, you know already, and and working with them will just you know bring more notoriety and and awareness. Well, I, I think that that's a, a space where I'm going to call out to our network. I know we've got people in there in the New York community that can really work on this with us. Uh, I think that's an area we, we can help with some introductions and, and really help expand what you're doing because uh, you're, you're doing incredible work. And I think that uh, getting you some additional support in terms of those relationships and organizations would help escalate uh, the, the awareness of what you're doing and, and be able to scale it up in terms of access and, and things like that. So Ross, I wanna congratulate you for, for everything you're doing. Why don't you tell everybody 
where where they can reach you if if they have ideas sure so um you can get us on uh you can contact us through our website um at soulpurposenyc.com or on um you know instagram facebook or twitter uh just soulpurposenyc um you can dm us write us an email um anything like that well, again, congratulations on the great work. Before we let you go, though, I do want to take a minute and put you on the spot here. We're, we're going to use our sports philanthropy superpowers, and we're going to wave our magic wand, and we're going to appoint you as commissioner of one of the sports. So tell us what sport you're going to choose. I think I'm going to have to go with my favorite sport, basketball. Okay, so basketball, you're taking over. You're moving uh, – Commissioner Silver out of the out of his office, and uh, what what's your first action there? What are you going to change? Uh, I would like to change. Um, I would like to add a four point line. Definitely a four point line. Definitely want to add it. You know, more excitement, closer games. I'd love to see all those crazy long range shooters. You know, get hot. You know, Dame, Dame, Dame Lillard. You know, Steph Curry, Trey Young. I love to see them go crazy at a four point line. So, so tell us about that four point line. How far behind the regular arc would you put that? Ooh. At least, at least three to five feet behind the line, at least. Okay. They can, they and then can, are we gonna are we gonna throw in a five point line for a mid court shot at uh, at the buzzer? I mean, if that's my second move, yes. <laughs> Well, Ross, again, I want to thank you for, for coming on today. Uh, we really appreciate your time. You're doing great work, and um, we've, we've got some people we're going to connect you to that I think will be able to help uh, what you're doing in, in New York. So keep up the great work. All right. Sounds good. I really appreciate you having me, and I look forward to, uh, to working with you. And for all of our viewers and listeners, we appreciate you taking time to join us on the Sports Philanthropy Podcast. This is your host, Roy Kessel. <laughs> signing off, and we want to remind you to live generously. Thank you.